The following talk is offered freely to ensure that no one is ever denied access to these practices and to these teachings. If you feel inspired to make a donation to support this offering, you can go to my website at jonathanfaust.com. While you're there, you can also sign up for a monthly newsletter designed to support you in your practice. Thank you, and enjoy. Seeing that Christmas tree in the lobby coming in tonight um, remind me of this, this piece from one of my great heroes in life, Dave Barry. Once again, we find ourselves enmeshed in the holiday season, that very special time of year when we join with our loved ones in sharing centuries-old traditions, such as trying to find a parking space at the mall. We traditionally do this in my family by driving around the parking lot until we see a shopper emerge from the mall, and we follow her in very much the same spirit as the three wise men who 2,000 years ago followed a star week after week until it led them to a parking space. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. It's been a while since I've actually sat down to a big family dinner, but, and I know how challenging it can be. And I ran across a piece of advice that I wish I heard a long time ago when you're upset at the Thanksgiving dinner. That is, if you can't say something nice, say it in French. <laughs> so Thanksgiving for some people is heaven, just being with family. And Thanksgiving for some people is hell, being with family. You know, this whole time is about giving thanks, but it's stunning how quickly we can lose it. I remember uh, once going home at the age of 28, and within 15 minutes, I'd fully regressed to about 13. And it's very easy to get caught in states of non-Thanksgiving. But the good news is that you can change your state. When you feel grateful, you feel a sense of ease, you feel a sense of connectedness. And what I'd like to talk about a little bit tonight is kind of the the disease of non-gratitude when when you're caught in not feeling grateful and how the nature of the self is to be selfish and how through some relatively simple practices you can create a radical shift by cultivating gratitude and appreciation. And how the more that you can really work this lens of gratitude and appreciation, how it can it can open up new possibilities in your life. Remember Dale Carnegie, who wrote the book How to Win Friends and Influence People, which definitely influenced me as a kid. I read it and reread it. It was such a powerful book for me. But I remember he said how everyone is listening to the same radio station. And WIFM, what's in it for me? And that really is kind of the nature of of the small self. I heard about this guy uh, named Arthur Bundridge in Syracuse, New York, who held up a bank and demanded $20,000. When he got home, he discovered he was shortchanged, and he stormed back to the bank to complain. And they got arrested. But, <laughs> but that's, that's who we are when we're self-centered. We get, we get really locked in. And maybe you noticed how many of us here were with family over, over Thanksgiving. Yeah. Have you noticed how there's always someone who tells the same story every year exactly the same way that they told it the year before? It's almost a ritual to, to the storytelling in the family. It's there's something kind of cool about it. You know, you're creating your own family mythology that gets reinforced through kind of the retelling of the stories. It's not a bad thing, but it could be kind of a limiting thing because 
we tend to habitually live in a self-reinforcing narrative that keeps our, our world intact. And it can maintain a sense of self, but it can also limit us from, from really from what's possible in life. So as soon as you begin to practice mindfulness or non-judging awareness, it can begin to deconstruct that sense of self. And it can open up new possibilities. As you become more self-aware, you become more aware of others. It kind of comes automatically. And that can be healthy and organic, and sometimes it can be kind of a shock when we realize just how, how closed in we are in our perspective on life. So instead of what's in it for me, new possibilities can emerge sometimes. So a little bit more on our, our essential narcissism uh, as a species. Um, I ran across these, these complaints that were lodged in a, a travel bureau. There was a guest at a Novotel in Australia who complained that his soup was too thick, complained bitterly that his soup was too thick, and the waiter came over and realized he was slurping the gravy So here's some of the, co the complaints that people wrote into this travel agency. Um, it's lazy of the shopkeepers in Puerto Vallarta to close in the afternoons. I want to buy things during siesta time, and siesta should be banned. <laughs> On my holiday to Goa in India, I was disgusted to find that almost every restaurant served curry. <laughs> no one told us there would be fish in the water. The children were scared. <laughs> we went on holiday to Spain and had a problem with the taxi drivers as they were all Spanish. <laughs> My fiance and I requested twin beds when we booked, but instead we were placed in a room with a king bed. We now hold you responsible and want to be reimbursed for the fact that I became pregnant. It's pretty sad, but we all have a tendency to do this. You know, life revolves around us when we're caught in that sort of complaining, small-minded sense of self. The nature of the ego is self-preservational. It wants to keep things the way we want them to be. And the nature of reality, of course, as soon as you begin to practice meditation to look at the nature of the mind and the nature of reality, the nature of reality is that things change. All conditioned things change. And the nature of suffering is that to the degree you're resisting what's changing, to that degree you're going to suffer. And the nature of suffering is to look at who it is that's suffering and sensing if you might have some other options. So this is the power and the potency of, of being aware. You can actually have access to, to more resourceful states rather than just reacting to your life. This whole new world opens up where you can start to respond. One way to describe it as is training yourself to look for the good. It's possible to overdo it, which I've done. Um, I tend to be a zealot when I try on new practices. And so, um, you know, I read a lot about, this is years and years and years ago, about the, the transformative power of gratitude and what happens in the brain. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write a gratitude journal, 10 things every night. And I'm not going to repeat myself. That was my rule. I'm not going to repeat myself. The first couple days, it was fantastic. I could really, really feel the shift. And then I started running out of things to be grateful for. But I really wanted to stick with the practice. So I found myself listing the body parts that weren't hurting <laughs> just to fill it out. Hmm, the second knuckle on my right finger, on my right hand, feels pretty good. Let me write that down. 
still it was somewhat helpful. So I had shared this before, but I thought I might share it again. <clears throat> so it's, it's a little exercise in really just tapping into gratitude in a very, very pragmatic way. This last year, I've had some really incredible opportunities to teach and share these practices. Um, we did a, a six-week um, mindfulness training for the, the staff in the U.S. Senate that was available for everyone in the Senate, but also beamed out to all the, all the support offices around the country. That was kind of cool. And I did a presentation for the National Security Council and uh, for a lot of CEOs and business leaders. And um, in one of these, I was really stuck on designing a training. I had, I had way too many options. I didn't know where to start. And as the deadline was getting closer, I was going slightly nuts trying to really hone in on what was going to be most impactful for this particular group. And then I remembered this exercise, and, uh, and I'll share this with you. And it's so interesting is how when you're, when you're caught in something, you're reinforcing that small sense of the self where there are very limited possibilities, and it's usually driven by some form of fear. You know, and, and fear oftentimes shows up as fear of losing control or fear of not being liked or fear of your identity you know, being challenged in some really big way. And so I was kind of spinning in this a little bit. You know, I wanted to look good. I wanted to be successful. And that was getting in the way of tapping into something creative, and it really felt authentic for me. So in this very, very simple formula, the first thing you do is you ask yourself one thing you're grateful for. So I thought about that, and I thought, I'm really grateful to be living this life where I can be really creative and I can be in front of really extraordinary people. I kind of sat with that. And then you think of a second thing you're grateful for. And I thought, well, I'm grateful to be in front of people who are really open-minded, who are willing to, really willing to try on new things, who are looking for best practices. And I kind of dwelt on that and what that felt like and could feel a little percolation there. And, and a third thing, I thought, well, I'm grateful to be in good health and feeling, feeling really alive and lit up in my life. And again, sort of reflected on that. And just reflecting on those three qualities of gratitude, I could, again, feel that expansion going on and talk a little bit more about what happens in the brain when you do that. And then once you've done that, then you, then you just simply complete the following phrase. What I most need to focus on is, and they just sort of popped in. Oh, well, what I need to focus on is getting everyone on the same page, creating a sense of connection, talking about the, the science or the practices, and then dive right into experience that we can really share and give them something really solid. It was just like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. Kind of clicked for me. So what kind of happened for that is by, by sort of turning from, from the fear and the anxiety, but just taking three or four minutes just to open and dwell on gratitude and appreciation, I created a shift. And in that shift, when I came back to revisit, I was informed by that shift. So why don't we try it on? The first thing you want to do is just to think about something that's, something that's been bugging you, something that's troubling you, something that feels somewhat unresolved in your life. You might take a few, take a few moments to go through the files. If you need a little more time, just raise one hand, because you want to kind of have something really alive and present for you. So you can close your eyes and take a few moments just to, just to kind of bring this issue a little bit closer. For some of us, we're visual, so you might sense if you can, can you recreate it visually? Is there a representative scene? Or you might play this out 
in a, like a little video. Again, if you're visual, if you turn up the colors and the contrast, it can bring it a little bit more alive. And as you're investigating this issue, it can be helpful to call on any auditory information, any words or sounds or tone of voice that are relevant to this particular piece. And finally, it's helpful to open up to, to the kinesthetic, to the felt sense of this. When you think about this issue, what does it feel like on the inside? Can you locate that? Is there an emotional word that resonates with this particular feeling inside? So just letting this issue know you see it. And so now, if you would, take a moment to reflect on, on one thing that you feel gratitude for or that you appreciate. And take some time again to visualize that. Can you see it? other words or sounds. And as you stream energy toward that which you feel grateful for, can you let a feeling arise inside? Could you let that feeling get big? Take a moment to really let this know you see it. And now, if you would, bring into mind a second thing in your life for which you feel gratitude or feel appreciation. And bring it in close. Can you see it? Are there sounds or words? And what feeling begins to arise on the inside? And can you let this get big? How big could this get? And now, if you would, bring into mind a third something that you feel gratitude for or appreciation. And again, how vividly can you see it or imagine it? Any words or sounds? And what felt sense begins to form as you stream attention toward this? And you might take a moment just to sense the cumulative effect of, of that which you are most grateful for, just to reflect on how blessed you are in this life. And now bringing your attention back to the original issue that you were investigating and let yourself complete the following phrase. What I really need to focus on here is. And imagine if you were to do this, not perfectly, not all the time, but if you were to do this, what would that be like? What would that feel like? Take just a few more moments, a few more breaths.
And when you're ready, you can deepen your breath. And you can let this whole exercise kind of fall away. And if you like, you can open your eyes or you can remain with them closed. So I hope that was helpful. There's something really interesting about what happens when you contemplate and stream attention toward gratitude and appreciation. There's something called evolutionary biology. And it really speaks of how we have the free will to start an, an upward spiral of well-being. And what kicks it in are just small reflections on gratitude and appreciation and generosity. And there was a kind of a, a ground, groundbreaking study in 2015 called the Neural Correlates of Gratitude. They really showed that gratitude and appreciation appear to be incredible factors that hold our social fabric together. That when you feel gratitude and appreciation, there are a few things that happen. It, it nurtures and fortifies your sense of connectedness. It stimulates moral cognition and value judgment. And if you want to get technical, it stimulates the anterior cingulate cortex and the medial prefrontal cortex. Maybe you were thinking that. You know, my, my medial prefrontal cortex is tingling here. So gratitude is profound for cultivating resourcefulness. They were uh, in interviewing Holocaust survivors. The one thing that the study noted was how the memory of the smallest acts of kindness, someone sharing a piece of bread, you know, being sheltered, it was those moments that, that helped them hold on to their humanity and hold on to their sense of inner strength. So it's an incredibly powerful practice to cultivate in your life. It's, it can be dramatic in terms of shifting your consciousness, giving you sense, a more sense of resourcefulness and interconnectedness. But it's also very powerful for creating a shift. Uh, Tara, my wife, and I have, have a bi-weekly check-in. <clears throat> and this whole check-in started years ago um, when, from time to time, she would say, we never talk. And of course, I would say, oh, never? We never talk? Which is not a good start to a conversation. <laughs> <clears throat> so I got to the point, at, at some point, with uh, a rather heated language, I said, let's put it in the gosh darn calendar. And so we kind of built it in. And over the years, we've refined our conversation. Now, quite generally, when, when my wife says we need to talk, there's something in me that goes, I know this will be good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'll be glad we did this. But there is nothing in me that wants to have this conversation right now. <laughs> so we refined our, our, our check-in, and it's actually quite enjoyable. I actually find myself looking forward to it. And this is killer. The first question we have is, what are you grateful for? And it's stunning. Ultimately, we're getting toward what's going on between us. It needs to be cleaned up. But when you start with, what are you grateful for? It's phenomenal. So when I listen to my wife share about what she's grateful for, I can't not feel a softening. When I begin to talk about what I'm grateful for, again, my anterior cingulate starts to like vibrate, and I start feeling good. The second question we use, just to kind of continue, this, this opens up the field in such a powerful way. The second question is, what are your current challenges? And again, this one's phenomenal. 
Because when I hear my wife talk about what she's struggling with, the field is already opened up with gratitude. So then the empathy starts to flow. Like, oh, I didn't know you were struggling with that. Or if I take the time to really articulate what's challenging in my life, just naming it opens things up. And that leads to what is quite often the most challenging question is, what's between us and feeling connection? What's between us and feeling love? Just to jump into that last one, prematurely, would not be so effective. But when you set the field with gratitude, it's fantastic. If there's one thing I could recommend in, in your relationships or your friendships, that really, really works. So there's a great saying that says, energy follows awareness. What you focus on, the energy flows in that direction. So when you can begin to train yourself to look for the good, it can really create a very powerful shift in your life. And there are lots of studies out there that show how just keeping a gratitude journal, you know, before you go to bed at night, three things that you're grateful for. That when you, when you fall asleep with that sense of, of gratitude and appreciation, how just like two or three weeks of that practice begins to cultivate a shift. And again, it's not just a mental shift. It actually changes how your brain how it, how it functions, how it perceives reality, a greater sense of connectedness, you know, a greater sense of resourcefulness toward life. And, and cultivating that shift opens up immeasurable possibilities. I heard this comedian a while ago who was saying like, well, I'm a father now, you know, I have a son and and I'm really focusing now on being a really rotten father. And he went on to talk about how, like, Steve Jobs and Larry Ellison, Sylvester Stallone, all these, like, really successful people had really terrible fathers. And they, he said, I, I, don't, I don't want to raise some kid who, loves, who knows he's loved and is socially well-adjusted going out into the world. He's going to be eaten alive. <laughs> But it really points towards something that is actually a really critical aspect of how you can apply gratitude. And I, when I first ran across this, um, when, I, when I lived in an ashram for a couple decades, the, uh, the inspiration of this ashram was quite a profound practitioner. He spoke, he said that that the first thing you do when, you, uh, when you're fully awakened is you offer pranams to all of your obstacles. You know, you offer, you bow to all of your obstacles. Because in that moment of recognition, that moment of awakening, you realize that it was all of the challenges in your life that led you to, to that final awakening. And so it's a tremendously powerful thing to really reflect on how your most difficult and challenging times of your life have formed who you are. In, in my family, I, I always felt like the odd one out. I was too sensitive. I was too artistic. I never felt understood, on and on and on. But all of that sense of alienation incentivized me to, to get on a search. And it got me practicing and on a spiritual path. And because I never really felt safe or seen or heard, my whole life is around creating a safe space for people to go inward and have that sense of connection. And it's so powerful to really reflect on how your greatest gifts that you bring to the world most probably are directly and intimately related to your deepest wounds. The sacred gift is connected to the sacred wound. And Tony Robbins, if you're familiar with him, he has just affected so many people on the planet, talked about how in his relationship with his mother, who was very, very 
um, unstable and very erratic. At one point, had attacked him with a knife. You know how he said, "I'm so grateful," you know, because she taught me that I could find the power inside myself. She taught me that I had the resources to help other people who were suffering. So when you when you explore gratitude, it's so important to reflect on bringing a sense of gratitude to all of your deepest troubles, all of your deepest challenges. So maybe a, a short reflection on that, if, if you don't mind. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. And take a moment or two to, again, connect with your breath. Just notice where you feel the breath and inside right now. Make contact with the sound vibrations. You might take a moment just to sense what are the three most challenging aspects of your life. your deepest struggles. And what have you learned or what are you in the process of learning through these trials? Is there a sense of how these sacred wounds in some way can be sacred gifts? Of how these can be transmuted into wisdom and compassion and being of service to others? And again, if you like, you can deepen your breath. And if you'd like, you can open your eyes. It's really hard right now uh, in our culture to look at what's going on and cultivate a sense of gratitude and appreciation. It's very easy to get triggered into fear and anxiety. Things are really, really intense right now. But it is a really interesting question. What if we wake up? And I think it's safe to say there has been a quality of waking up in the midst of this whole scene with more, more women running for office than ever before, scientists running for office, and a deep, deep awakening of people really feeling empowered to make a difference. And it becomes a really interesting question. What, what if we wake up and we actually recognize the damage that we've done to our ecosystem? What if we find a way to respond to this institutionalization of the unreal others and honor the rights and freedoms of the non-dominant cultures and LGBTQ and the suffering of animals? And it's very interesting to, to sense how in the midst of as crazy as it is right now that there are some really interesting things going on on the planet right now. There are amazing breakthroughs in medicine. Cancer deaths have dropped 25% since 1991. 
Chile has set aside 11 million acres for, uh, for national parks. And out of a, after a devastating flood, there's a province in Pakistan that has planted one billion trees. And after all the, uh, the, just the rape and pillage of the land in Cameroon, they have just committed to restoring 12 million hectares of forest in the Congo Basin. In Brazil, where there's so much deforestation, they have planted 73 million trees in the last number of years. Uh, the cost of solar has dropped more than 25% in recent years. So it's fascinating to see that, that there, is, there is evidence of a response to, to suffering. And gratitude and appreciation they can help us transcend our small sense of self. And they can give us a sense of resourcefulness. And it's possible to train yourself to look for the good. It's more a question of habit. And as we always say again and again in this practice, that the practice of mindfulness is really one of the key words is sati, and that's remembering sort of remembering what's most important in, in any given moment. So whether your Thanksgiving was really wonderful or whether it was really rotten, um, I hope this reflection on gratitude might, might be of some help. Um, why don't we close with a little meditation? in the midst of all that is changing. You can always remember the seat of the witness of who you are as the one who is aware. This quality of non-judging, non-grasping presence. And it is always possible, not perfectly, not all the time, to move from reaction to responding. And in these remaining minutes, you might just take a moment to, to again think of someone or something that you're grateful for, something fresh. Incentive, if you can see it, feel it, bring it alive. And now inviting in something else that you feel grat grateful for or appreciate. And again, draw it close, let it get big. And now one more thing for which you feel gratitude or appreciation. And again, let it be fresh. Can you see it, feel it, hear it? And take a moment just to sense with just these minutes of streaming your attention toward what is personally for you, something you feel grateful for or appreciate. Just sensing what may have shifted just in these minutes. 
Maybe you feel a little tingling at your anterior cingulate cortex. How big could that sense of appreciation get? And now sensing the flow of your life, sensing what's changing in your life, what's falling away, what's calling you forward. And let yourself complete the following phrase internally in your own way. The most important thing in my life right now is The most important thing in my life right now is if nothing arises spontaneously, just find the words or a sense that most resonates for you. And as you're ready now, you can deepen the breath. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much. I'm immensely grateful uh, for you. I'm really grateful to be here with you. Grateful as well as for the cookies, which are, I believe, waiting out in the lobby. Have a wonderful few weeks. We have Tricia Stotler, who's going to be here next week. I'll see you in a few weeks.